your Bibles with me to the prophecy of Isaiah at chapter 53. <clears throat> Isaiah at chapter number 53. Verses 1 through verse number 6. And I want to preach from the subject, Wounded for Me. Thank you, Lord. He was wounded Thank you, Lord. For, me. for me. Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of a dry ground. He have no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised. And we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But, hallelujah, he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised. For our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Thank you. You may have your seats. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Wounded for me. I can seldom read that passage of scripture without almost shouting. He was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. In Shakespeare's Macbeth, Lady Macbeth, trying to wash her hands of her part in the murder of King Duncan, Lady Macbeth, trying to wash her hands, says, Out, damned spot. Out, I say. Here is the smell of blood. All the perfumes of Arabia will not sweeten this hand. And as Macbeth sees his wife coming apart under that distress, Macbeth says to a doctor, Canst thou not minister to a mind diseased, plucked from the memory a rooted sorrow, raise out the ridden troubles of the brain, and with some sweet oblivious antidote, cleanse the stuffed bosom of that perilous stuff which weighs upon the heart. Every one of us, like Macbeth, wishes for some sweet oblivious antidote 
to soothe us concerning our sin. We self-medicate to pluck from our memory a rooted sorrow. We self-medicate to erase a troubled past, an unconfessed or an unforgiven sin. And we use as some sweet, oblivious antidote entertainment, sex, drugs, working overtime. One failed relationship after another. Achievement, what we've earned, where we live, what we drive, what we own, as some sweet, oblivious antidote to deaden the pain of our empty existence. Our human nature is radically twisted into an instinctive yet deliberate an ineradicable habit of God denying, God defying self-service so that God's requirement of perfect love to himself and others is permanently beyond our reach. And falling short of God's standard marks our lives every day. So in order to keep from total psychological, moral, and spiritual schizophrenia, we shift the blame. It's as old as the Garden of Eden. We blame somebody else for the mess we made of our own lives. We are all trapped in consequences that we did not intend, but consequences that we set in motion. Every one of us looks at something in the past and agonizes by saying, if only. If only I had not done so and so. I wish I had a witness here. If only I could go back in the past and erase the mistakes that I have made. If I could make enough money, if I could live in a bigger house, if I could drive a faster car, if I could get rid of my prison record, if I would not have had the divorce, if I had not have gotten pregnant, if I had not gotten on drugs, if I had not told a lie, if I had not cheated, if I had not committed adultery, if I had not going astray, if I had not misused God's blessings in my life, if only, if only. Oh, brothers and sisters, if we have to answer for what we've done, all of us would be crushed this morning. But he was wounded. I wish I had a witness here. My life does not have to be filled with regrets. My past does not have to keep haunting me every day because he was wounded for my transgression. He was bruised for my iniquity. The chastisement of my peace God put on him. And with his stripes I got healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. I don't care how much you read the Bible. I don't care how often you show up at church on Sunday morning. I don't care how big the cross you wear around your neck. All we like sheep. I wish I had a witness here. Your sin may not be my sin and your issue may not be my issue, but all of us struggle with some sin issues this morning and all of us need help 
but he was wounded for my transgression. I want to I, I want to go at this because it's the it's a it's a song of the suffering servant. It's a song that starts in chapter 52, uh, verse 13, 14, and 15, is, is, the, is the preamble, is the opening lyrics to this song. Behold, my servant shall deal prudently. He shall be exalted and extolled and be very high. As many were astonished at thee, his visage was so marred more than any man, and his form more than the sons of men. So shall he sprinkle many nations. The king shall shut their mouths at him. For that which had not been told them shall they see, and that which they had not heard they shall consider. So who hath believed our report? Who has believed this message? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? He shall come forth as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. Without Christ, our lives are a dry ground. I, I need somebody who's been a Christian a long time but who will be honest with me this morning that there have been in your life and in mine some dry spells. You, 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 you try to pray and your mind just wanders off. I wish I had a witness here. You, you try to walk right but but you're just going through the motions. You come to church and sing the songs, but you don't feel anything because there's a dry spell in your life. I've had those periods in my life when I just preached to stand up here. I just went through the motions. I just came to church and really didn't feel anything. There are times when you just clap because everybody else is clapping or you nod your head because everybody else is nodding their head. Life will send some situations in your way that will cause you to have a dry spell. But oh, thank God. He comes forth as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. In that dry time in your life, Jesus Christ shows up to sweeten up your bitter water. Uh, you, 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 have to, you have to be honest about sin before you can rejoice about salvation. You have to be ready to admit that I ain't no good. I'm a crook. I'm a liar. I'm a wretch. I'm a fake. Come on, talk back to me here. I'm, I'm talking about sitting in this church right now. I got a mask on. You don't see who I really am because I covered it with a necktie and a suit. But underneath all this stuff I got on is a crook, a wretch. I haven't got a witness here. I haven't killed anybody, but I murdered them in my heart. I haven't committed adultery, but I went to the hotel in my heart. Because I am a wretch undone. Haven't got a witness here. But he was wounded for my transgression. He was bruised for my iniquity. Now do you super saints in here? 
who ain't got no drama going on in your life. God bless you. I wish you'd pray for us. But there are some of us in here who don't mind testifying. If God pulled the cover off me, if, if, if God opened the closet, all my skeletons would fall out right now. But he was wounded for my transgression. for my iniquity. So I want to go at this song. I want to I want to I want I want I want to get at this. I want to sing it like Isaiah sang it. Um, he talks about his suffering. He's the suffering servant. He suffered at the hands of soldiers. A death on the cross is the most horrible form of execution known to mankind. We derive our word excruciating from the word Crucifixion. On the cross, tremendous strain was exerted on the wrists, arms, and shoulders, usually resulting in the dislocation of the shoulders and the dislocating of the elbow joints. Uh, the, 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 the hours on the cross the arms being held up and outward held the rib cage in a position which made it extremely difficult to exhale and totally impossible to take a deep breath. The muscles from the loss of blood and oxygen would undergo severe cramps and spasmodic contractions until the one being crucified suffocated in his own fluids. That lasted for days. To hasten death, they would come and break the crucifieds Lay. The, 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 the pool of fluids that congealed around the heart caused heart failure while you were still alive. Uh, the, the, the one crucified would try to take a deep breath, but to exhale would cause pressure on his feet that were nailed and to inhale caused pressure on his hands that were nailed and he would drown suffocate in his own fluid when they got to Jesus to break his legs the scripture was fulfilled I wish I had a Bible reading not a bone of his should be broken. He was numbered with the transgressor. Cursed is he that hangs on a tree. Hear him. See him. Suffering. Cannot exhale. Impossible to take a deep breath saying, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. I'm thirsty.
Woman, behold your son. Son, behold your mother. And then a thief on the cross said, when you come in your kingdom, remember me. Hear him saying, verily, I say unto you, today you will be with me in paradise. <laughs> and when they get ready to kill him, he says, it is But worse than that suffering was he suffered at the hands of sovereignty. For his father turned his back. God poured out his wrath into the body of his son Jesus and Jesus suffered the undiluted, unfiltered Wrath of Almighty God. Hell was turned loose on Jesus in all of its ferociousness. Hell hounds beat their breasts with glee for the Son of Man is dead. My old pastor used to imagine a conversation between hell and the grave. Death got a hold of Jesus on the cross. And death and the grave, my old pastor used to say, conversed with one another. Death said to the grave, I got it. Grave can you hold it? My old pastor said, the grave said to death, you do your job Friday. And I'll do my job once they put him in the grave. And Friday, death did his job. He died. Didn't he die? They took his body down and put him in the grave of Joseph of Arimathea. Joseph and Nicodemus bring him to the grave. And my old pastor said, death said to the grave, can you hold it? The grave says to death, everybody you got since Adam is still in the grave. You got Adam and I still got him. You killed Abraham, I still got him. You took Noah, I still got him. I wish I had somebody to help me. Ezekiel and Daniel, Hosea and Amos, Habakkuk, Zephyr, everybody who died in the Old Testament, I still got them. You killed John the Baptist, I still got him. Do your job and I'll take care of the rest. And they put him in the grave and sealed it with a stone. And then my old preacher used to say he stayed there all night Friday night. He stayed there all day Saturday. Stayed there all Saturday night. And about that time, Miss Devine Roper would get up in the front seat and start running from the back of the church to the front. And Miss Ella Darby had to be carried out by that time because they knew what Reverend Wilkinson was getting ready to say. What I'm about to say right now, bright early, Sunday morning, he got up from the grave with all power. But, but I want you to see not only his suffering, but the significance of that suffering. Uh, 
a price had to be paid. The price of a transfer had to be made. The choir sang it to us so beautifully just a moment ago. We had to be redeemed. And in order to exact redemption, a price had to be paid. The only way for us to be transferred from a state of bondage without hope to a state of freedom with a future, blood had to be shed. And so if you're here this morning looking for some oblivious sweet antidote to rid you of your sin problem, you're not going to find it in achievement. You're not going to find it in entertainment. You're not going to find it in working overtime, making more money. You're not going to find it in sex and drugs. You're not going to find an oblivious sweet antidote in illicit affairs. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Have I got a witness here? Brothers and sisters, in order for us to be redeemed, blood had to be shed. I'm not talking about blood of bullocks on the altar. Bloods of rams of consecration and lambs without spot or blemish that covered sin, but it didn't take sin away. Have I got a witness here? There's a difference between propitiation and expiation. I wish I had a witness. Expiation means the sin has been covered. But propitiation means not only has the sin been taken away, but the relationship has been restored. Outside Christ, I am the enemy of God. But since Christ shed his blood on the cross, I'm no longer God's enemy. I can become God's friend. I wish I had a Bible reader here. The blood of Jesus Christ is efficacious for my sin problem. Whenever I sin, notice I didn't say if ever I sin, because I sinned just yesterday. Talk back to me if you can. I thought about something that shouldn't have been on my mind. Or I did something that I had no business doing. Or I wish I could have done something that I had no business doing. I wish I had some honest believer here this morning. You see, the reason why some of y'all can't shout is because you think you pretty good. And because we don't know what your issue is, you think you got it all together. But God knows what's going on in your mind and in your heart. I wish I had a witness here. That's why you need to plead the blood of Jesus to help you with your sin issue. He died on the cross to redeem me from my sin problem. And I thank God this morning that whatever sin the devil brings up, Jesus took care of it on the cross. Whatever the devil accuses me of this morning, Jesus is on the right hand of God with power, saying I already died to take care of that situation. And that's why I can raise my hands in the sanctuary. That's why I can praise God with a clear conscience. Because the Bible says if you confess your sin, he is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. I wish I had somebody this morning who don't mind testifying. I got some scars on my back. I've got some sins on my record. There's some things I wish I could undo in my past. That's some words I wish I could take back in my mouth. 
There are some deeds I wish I could go in my past and erase. But one Friday on a skull-shaped hill and on a blood-soaked cross, he died, didn't he die, to save me from my sin. But bright and early, Sunday morning, he got up from the grave with all power in his hand. That's what makes the saints shout today. That's what makes the Christian happy this morning. That my sins have been erased. My past has been forgiven. You can't ever bring up again what I used to be. Because God took my sins and threw them behind his back. Lost them in the sea of forgiveness. And they will never rise to condemn me this morning. So I'm saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. And I'm happy this morning. I'm glad this morning. At the cross, at the cross. I wish I had a witness. Where I first saw the light and the burden and the burden of my heart just rolled away. It was there. It was there. It was there. By faith I received my sight. And now, right now, now, right now, 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 why don't you grab somebody, why don't you hug somebody, tell them now, oh, now, I'm happy, I'm free, I'm saved, I'm redeemed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm saved. I'm enjoying heaven right now. I'm having a good time right now. I'm blessing the Lord right now. I'm praising God right now. I'm lifting my hand right now. I'm a fool for Christ right now. But you ain't seen, I said you ain't seen, you ain't seen nothing yet. Just as soon, just as soon, just as soon as my feet strike Zion. Some glad morning, when this life is over, I will. What about you? I will fly away. Why don't you grab somebody? Tell them if you miss me from singing down here. You can't find me nowhere. Come on up. Come on. Come on up. I know he's all right. I've been redeemed. 
I've been washed in the blood of the Lamb. My name is written in the book of life. I'm going to heaven when I die because Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. But one Wednesday down in Eunice, Louisiana, he washed white as snow. Isaiah says, come, let's reason together. Though your sins be as scarlet, they can be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they can be like wool. Because Jesus took your place on the cross, died the death of a sinner, but rose as a redeeming savior.